Andy Mogul. This week on the live season two finale of Indie News, 10 household alternatives to expensive filmmaking gear, like getting cheap dolly shots and anamorphic lens flares using stuff you already have at home. Plus a preview of next season's episodes, Eric Beck recreates effects from Skyfall and Paranormal Activity, and I answer your filmmaking questions live. of today's season two finale of Indie News was shot and broadcast live. But for some reason we lost the intro, so that's why I'm talking to you right now after we've already torn down. But let's get right to the meat of it, the low budget DIY tips. Today I've come up with a list of 10 household alternatives to expensive filmmaking gear, stuff you can find around your house that's super cheap. Number one, I don't have a dolly for shots like this, but I do have furniture pads. They slide on carpet or hardwood, and if I stick them under my tripod, check it out. Two, most of us don't need a fancy boom pole when a broom pole can hold a microphone just fine. Either drill a hole and add a screw, or use trick number three, tape. If gaffer tape is not already in your home, it should be. It's black and non-reflective, so it hides from the camera, and it doesn't leave a bunch of residue behind. When I filmed a project with William Shatner, I literally taped a microphone to a broom pole, and he seemed impressed by my thriftiness. Number four, I needed a case for my camera filters, but why buy one when I have an old wallet? Meanwhile, I store extra batteries in an audio cassette case. In a minute, I will share the rest of the household hacks list, but first, I want to introduce you to the team making this live broadcast possible. Hey, Matt. Hello, everyone. You're, you're in my shot behind me. I am. Hello. I'm <laughs> and you have a look right now. You have your own shot, too. That's this great. This is my shot right here. We also have Ryan here. Uh, Ryan, what are you doing today? I am reading comments. Are we getting a lot of comments? A lot of comments. Were there a lot of comments before we even went live? Yeah, there were a lot of comments <laughs> and a thumbs down. Oh, who would thumbs down a show that hadn't even started yet? Must have oh, been an accident. Yeah. Um, anything I need to know? Are we actually live right now? <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> and I think we're actually broadcasting in 1080, which is pretty cool. Uh, Matt, what are you doing for me today? Uh, right now, I am switching the live show. So the goof you saw at the beginning of the broadcast was, I'm going to blame your touchpad here. <laughs> Because I'm a oh. PC guy, that might make uh, Russell happy. So yeah, I'm, but I'm switching the show, uh, kicking off the packages, and uh, switching cameras. Yeah, cool. Well, why don't I give you a package to play? Let's show them how the live show works a little bit. All right. Producing a live show is expensive. To get the HDMI output of my Panasonic GH3 camera into my computer, I need a $300 device, the Blackmagic Intensity Extreme. I also need this $200 software, Wirecast for YouTube, to stream and live switch video to YouTube. Aside from those expenses, this is a frugal production. I'm using my DIY video light and my DIY teleprompter. Links to both Indie Mogul tutorials are in the video description. Today, we've actually also connected a live feed to my friend Russell. So let's check in. How are you doing, Russell? I'm good. Liking the live show so far. Great. And I am super excited that you and I are going to start collaborating more on Indie Mogul shows. So do you want to explain what is happening to everyone? Sure. Instead of working on two separate shows by ourselves, we know that we'll have a lot more fun and create more exciting content if we work together as a team. So starting September 9th, we're taking everything that you loved about Indie News and everything you love about Friday 101 and combining them into one show. Here's a quick promo. This fall on Indie Mogul, filmmakers Griffin Hammond, 
and Russell Hasenauer finally join forces to bring you an epic lineup of DIY filmmaking videos. Tune in Mondays this fall as they head to Las Vegas for the Film Fight's 10th anniversary convention. Swap computers to learn Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe Premiere. Shoot raw with the new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Hack a Panasonic GH2 and test how it compares. Finish their films and enter festivals. Answer your filmmaking questions live on Wednesdays. And start bringing you short films on Fridays, like the sequel to Home Without Marlecta. Be there for the epic third season of Indie News, premiering Monday, September 9th. Well, if that doesn't get you to subscribe to Indie Mogul, I don't know what will. That was a really good voice in there, too. That sounds familiar. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> it might be this guy behind me. Uh, hey, I want to check in with Russell. What did you think of that promo? Russell? Uh-oh. Did Russell. we lose Russell? Russell, where are you? Russell. I'm excited. There you are. Oh, cool. Oh, there he is. He's excited, apparently. Yeah, I am too. Uh, and it'll be cool hanging out with you in Vegas this Thursday. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, which video do you think we should shoot first when we're in Vegas? I'm excited. Um, what's going on? That's, that's not right. Okay, so um, we couldn't figure out how to get the live stream from Russell. So we asked him to film some answers in advance. Sorry about that. Oh, that's lame. That doesn't work. This is a live show. We gotta get. We have to figure out a way to get Russell actually live. So um, maybe we can get him in a Google Hangout and uh, film the screen or screen capture. I don't know. But we'll, before the end of the show, we are going to figure out a way to get the real Russell live here. I apologize for that. Um, but first, let's get back to the list of household hacks. These next three are all super cheap. They're paper. Number five, who needs a special white balance card when white paper is everywhere? Just place it in the light you're shooting in, point your camera, and set that custom white balance. Six is wax paper, which can be super handy for diffusing a DIY light, creating softer shadows. And number seven, I rarely use a green screen. Usually, I just pick up a colorful piece of poster board. You can key out any color as long as it's different than the subject. Coming up, the final three household hacks. Sweet. Uh, Ryan, why don't you bring that computer around here? I want to see what people are saying on the live broadcast. Anything super cool? Ooh, What Ha Productions says the image quality is great. That's awesome. This is really cool to be broadcasting in 1080. Um, let's see, Joe Kid Animation says, OMG, we are gonna get to see the Griffin Hammond. Yeah, you're watching him right now. Um, let's see, Trevor Nose says it looks like a live TV show. That's awesome, that's what I'm trying to do. Prove this is live, do a Family Guy impression from Cooley Movies. Um, I don't even think I can do a Family Guy. Can you do a Family Guy impression? <laughs> Not today. Um, Friggin' sweet. There you go. That's good. This is yeah. This is the voice yeah, guy over here. Yeah. You want a Family Guy impression? You're gonna get it, buddy. All right. <laughs> it's live. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and Will's Anime Vision says the show's great. So uh, thanks. I, I appreciate that. Um, send in your questions, especially when we get to the end of this list. I want to tackle a bunch of your questions. So uh, keep sending in your comments. Thanks, Ryan. Um, next up, I want to talk about how. I am super excited because this week I am going to Las Vegas for the Film Fights Convention to hang out with my friends Eric Beck and Justin Johnson, the guys that started Indie Mogul. These days they're making all sorts of cool videos for many different clients, and I know you'll love their latest project. The movie channel Epics hired them to produce season three of DIY Effects, which I'd love to see on the screen right now. Here we go. <laughs> what a flick! Twelve short episodes that recreate Hollywood effects for cheap. Episodes 1 and 2 are on the Epic's YouTube channel now. How to fake a motorcycle chase from Skyfall and the levitation effect from Paranormal Activity 4. Links are in the video description, so you'll have to check those out. Uh, now, I want to show you the last three household alternatives I've come up with to expensive filmmaking gear. 
Number eight, our friend Dave Knopp always uses foam board to reflect light onto his subject. In fact, a lot of flat white things would make great reflectors. And if you need a less diffused reflection, you could wrap something flat with aluminum foil. Nine is important. We all need good audio in our videos, but not everyone has a microphone or an audio recorder to get a close, clear recording. But almost everyone has access to a mobile phone, which probably has a built-in audio recorder. Even a phone on a boom pole will sound better than your camera 20 feet away. And some phones include a regular mic jack, so you could just plug in a clip-on mic. For my final household filmmaking tip, I'm looking through my wife's clothes for these clear plastic ribbons. They're for hanging, but she doesn't use them, so I'll chop one off, color it with a marker, and use a rubber band to attach it vertically to the front of my prime lens. Suddenly, I'm J.J. Abrams. Look at all those stylish lens flares. Normally, you'd need an anamorphic lens adapter to get this effect, but thankfully I learned this super cheap DIY technique from indie mogul fan Bryce Pardo. It won't work with just any lens. You need a wide enough aperture so that the ribbon doesn't appear in the shot. Matt, don't you think that was a pretty cool effect? That last one? That was awesome. I, I was impressed when I, when I found that. That was, that was pretty cool. Uh, so I hope you found today's 10 household filmmaking tips helpful. And I want to know in the comments what everyday items you use in your arsenal, because I'm sure there's way more than the 10 I came up with. Speaking of comments, uh, Ryan, I would love to tackle a comment or two. Anything happening? What are there, like 10,000 comments? I found a really interesting one. I thought you might like to answer that first one or attempt. From Ricardo Reyes, hey, what do you think in the film versus digital war? I mean, film is cool, and everyone is always talking about trying to make their cameras look more like film, but you can't beat how cheap and available cameras are now. I mean, I, I, I can't uh, say enough for the digital cinema revolution. I mean, I love shooting digital, so I, I would never go back. Anything else? Let's see. Uh, Duck Force One notices that I have Sriracha in the background. Yeah, I had to, I had to tag that. <laughs> Did you point to something else there? Right there. From Camden McDonald, have you ever considered doing an indie mogul film festival like Mogler made but with prizes? Yeah, I would love to. In fact, I would love to do a film festival at all. I, I feel like I'm going to try to go to a bunch with my film this year. And something I really want to do in, in our town is see if I can start a local one. I think if I could pull that off or maybe learn from going to film festivals, I, I, could, I could figure out how to do it for indie mogul the right way. I, I would love to do that. And uh, Lucas, our good friend Lucas, says, what recording gear are you using for the sound of this live show? That's a good question. Uh, I am using my uh, Asden SGM-1X shotgun microphone sitting just out of frame. And I've set up a mic there for Matt to talk into. Yep. <laughs> and then we have both of these there running is. into a mixer board. I mean, normally I would go into the H4N. I have the, the Zoom H4N audio recorder, but uh, it's pretty handy here to have an actual mixer that we can it's a little bit easier uh, we've actually been turning down our audio during all the packages so hopefully you're not hearing us <laughs> if we were doing it right uh so that, that gives us some some leeway well hey i will get to many more questions uh here right as soon as i wrap this up but uh first did we ever get russell oh uh, yeah i've got him right here oh cool Hold awesome on. hey griffin can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you i can't see you though He's on the screen, but I can't figure out how to get him on the broadcast. What if I uh, turn... What, what if I shoot a camera at the screen? Oh, hey, wait, Griffin. I'm, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Yeah, we're going to just really oh, no. do that. Save me! Um... That just happened. Awesome. Can you get him back? Could... All right. Well, hopefully we didn't kill him. <laughs> Let's hope not. We'll we'll, we'll find Russell. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. But uh, here, I wanna I wanna answer lots of your filmmaking questions. So let's see what we got. I appreciate you guys all joining me live. This is a lot of fun. This is cool. Yeah, I'm like when we're playing a clip and I'm like walking around getting water. I'm just thinking like this is 
This is really awesome. <laughs> Are you enjoying this? I'm having a great time. I, uh, <laughs> I'm just now finding an excuse to use the two shot. I love this, this two oh, shot. Oh, yeah. That, You're using the awesome the, uh, two shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a shame that we only get to do this once. I mean, I, I should probably do more live broadcasts. It's uh, stressful. I'm not going to lie to you. Very it's stressful. Kind of stressful. Yeah, we, I'm the guy goofing up on this thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the reason we started late was, I mean, three hours ago, I was still like editing, uh, but I was getting the packages done. Everything was done. It just, I was having a little bit of trouble like exporting it the right way that Wirecast would like it. We, some of the clips were choppy. They may have still been today. So I apologize if that was the case. Uh, but this is all kind of a learning opportunity, which is why we're doing it. So if I can help you guys learn, I would love to answer some questions. Let's see. We got a question from Danger Digital. Looks really good, Griffin. Is it hard to, uh, it's hard to keep in mind this is live because it looks like regular indie news. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I tried to do lots of like edited packages uh, to help do that. I feel like maybe I cheated a little bit too much on this episode. Like it was a lot of edited stuff. <laughs> but, you know, it was still pretty hard just to like do those, uh, you know, to make it all come together. Uh, to make my teleprompter work, to make sure I have a script for Matt that he can actually follow and understand what's going on. Um, to figure out this software. But this is cool. And the cool thing is our Wednesday live shows, they won't look like this. They'll continue to be on, on Google Hangouts, but we can use this software. So potentially I could set up a shot like this uh, with the GH3, the Panasonic GH3 is the camera I'm using. Um, we could do some, I can even, I think I can play packages now in the, in the Wednesday live shows. So we'll still keep those like an hour long and we'll try to answer lots of questions, but I'd love to see what we can do, experiment uh, with that a little bit. So look, look forward to that. What else do we have? Uh, Richard, uh, Richard Salgado is wondering if Russell, if Russell has evaporated, can I have his stuff? I just want to say we hate, we have not figured out what happened to Russell yet. Um, there are an infinite set of possibilities of what may have happened to Russell. I hope we find out soon, but I don't know. I can't say. I can't speculate right now if he evaporated. Uh, so it'd be inappropriate and, uh, uh, what's the word for too early? Um, um, premature. Premature. Premature, premature. To, uh, to take his things. So please don't do that. What else we got? We can at least put him in a pile though, right? I mean, there's no reason we can't be prepared. <laughs> yeah. If you want to go ahead and start packing up his stuff, um, I guess we'll find out if he's, if he's around uh, for Wednesday's live show. Uh, but otherwise, we won't see him much. If if we even if we find him, we're you know our our next show is going to be on September 9th. Uh, I think we'll still do live shows in between. I guess yeah, that that should work. Uh, uh, we're going to be in Vegas. I'm going to be working on the film, so we have a bunch of things going on in the next two weeks. So there won't be Monday shows. There won't be Friday shows. Thus, this is the the season finale. But we'll come back strong on September 9th with some cool stuff for you. Uh, here's a question from Joe Kid Anima Animations. Uh, we all know Joe Kidd on the live shows. Griffin, do you watch Breaking Bad? If so, do you like the cinematography? Yeah, I do. Uh, I watch it, and I do like the cinematography. Uh, in fact, I I don't usually watch it live, so I didn't see last night's episode, but I'm looking forward to when I get a chance doing that. I like on that show that they try a lot of things. Like, they have a pretty consistent style, but every once in a while they're willing to just like try something crazy, like... You know, just do a bunch of like, I don't know if they were, I don't think they were using GoPro, but they, they tend to do, they've done some like, you know, locked onto a car or locked onto something weird kind of shots. They like to put cameras in weird places. And so I appreciate that ingenuity. I gotta admit, I, I tried watching it once and I couldn't get into it, but I'm going to give it another shot because I've got 18 different people asking me, you need to see Breaking <laughs> Bad. It's so amazing. And I guess I can just binge watch it now. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing about it, I mean, I'm so happy that it's ending. I love the show and I am ecstatic that it's going to be over because I hate shows that just languish and don't know where they're going and just keep making up stuff every season. I love that there's going to be an end to the story and I'm super excited. Uh, you know, it just feels like my time is worthwhile when they end a show that they like know that I have other things to do. <laughs> Here's another question. Thank you, Ryan, for finding these questions. My pleasure. We got one from Jeff Verde. Shooting from perspective of a bicycle pedal, any tips? Well, you have to use a tiny camera. Um, I mean, it would have to be like a GoPro or something because you're going to worry about clearance on the bottom. Uh, I assume if the foot's on the top of the pedal, you're going to want to shoot from the bottom of the pedal. You can always flip. 
Well, yeah. Yeah, you'd flip the shot over, but it will still be like an I'm under the pedal shot. It'll be crazy uh, when it goes near the ground. I think it'll actually be nauseating, though. I don't know if you'll actually get a good shot. Like, it sounds cool in principle, but when you think about it, it's like a pedal moves really fast. That'd be like putting a camera on the wheel. It'll just be like, and it won't, it won't actually be much to look at. So yeah, There will be moments of coasting where they're not yeah. actually doing, you know, t turning the, the, the pedals. Yeah, so. yeah. And anytime I mount a camera on something weird like that, I usually try to frame it in such a way that there's something in the foreground kind of obstructing the shot. Because, like, let's say you put a camera on the front handlebars of a bike and it doesn't see any of the bike. It just sees what's in front of the bike. All it's going to be is just a really shaky shot, right? I mean, a bike is pretty shaky. It's just going to be like this really ugly shot. It's not going to look particularly cool. But if you can get it behind the handlebars and you actually see the handlebars, the hands and everything, it'll still be a shaky shot, but it'll be locked onto the foreground stuff. That stuff won't move. Everything else will be shaky. So there's something psychologically and visually for the audience to look at and go, I'm grounded to this. It's not just a shaky shot. There's something cool to look at there. So yeah, always consider the framing. Yeah. Frame, yeah. Uh, like when I did the GoPro over my shoulder, you know, it's over my shoulder so that it, there's me anchoring the shot. Always think about that. Um, what else do we have? Ryan just accidentally highlighted all the questions. <laughs> I guess I have to answer all. Everything. How many are there? Does it even say? So many. It's so many. Uh, is it the first one? Uh, no, I, I no. copied some to the, uh, oh, cool. the page there. Uh, let's see. Skellington421 wants to know, what's a good way to get different shots, such as a dolly or crane, without the actual gear? Well, today I showed you how you can replace a dolly with some uh, furniture pads, those things that move furniture around. Um, I'm trying to think of other ways to get dolly shots. I mean, you can always build your own dolly. I mean, there's, there's lots of DIY dollies out there. I mean, it's just a matter of getting wheels and something smooth or i mean today this is a, a a slick table behind me a hardwood table and one of the shots i did in the news intro was just like kind of a dolly away from the mixer board and i couldn't get that low with a dolly so i just put it on like i tried sliding the camera and the camera is too like grippy it doesn't slide but i put it on like a notebook just paper and paper slid real nicely over the wood so sometimes it's just a matter of finding Something that'll slide better than your camera. Uh, as for a crane shot, I don't know. You kind of have to have a crane. Crane shots look awesome. Uh, I think the only thing you could replace a crane with that I can think of would be like a, a, a helicopter. But then you're still spending a bunch of money on you know, a quadcopter or something. Uh, let's see. Joe Kidd says here, I remind him of Walter White. Apparently, that's what everyone says. <laughs> Jeff Rain wants to know if you could remake any show or movie with your vision over what the original creator did what would it be and why that's a tough question because I don't I mean that, that's that's a lot of balls to like <laughs> recreate someone else's uh, work I mean they, they, they you know they there's always good and bad stuff about every show and I don't know not just to recreate someone's work but claim to do it better that's I feel gutsy. like I I feel like I'd really have to hate a show to right. want to do that. I, mean, I think any show that I love, I can like recognize that you know some episodes were filler episodes and they weren't that fun. But I would change the finale of Seinfeld. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> you definitely yeah. That's a, that's a show I would change. I don't know, probably, and that and that is a show that I love so much that mm -hmm. I guess I was a little bit disappointed about that. Um, I mean, a lot of shows just kind of fade out at the end, and you'd love to like almost go back two seasons and be like, can we put a finale now and just end the show? Yeah. Did ER go on too long, you think? I didn't watch that show. No? No. Okay. I'm watching West Wing now. Uh, I really like Aaron Sorkin, so right now I'm watching Newsroom, which is a current show, and uh, West Wing is a show that was on like 12 years ago, and I didn't watch it. I'm watching it now. I hear, though, that season five is not that great, but that I should just power through it. Most of the show is awesome. I'm in like for me. season three Blast right now. You, do, you like season five? I like it all. Okay, good. Aaron that's Sorkin. good. I'm good. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. We're rewatching it too. We're doing the same thing, my wife and I. So that's, we don't have cable, so we gotta have something to watch. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Coming in a little slower now. Yeah. We'll probably have to answer some more questions and then, and then get out of here. I don't want to have this go on forever. 
But uh, let's see, Lediopolis. Man, this is another <laughs> Breaking Bad <laughs> themed question. Uh, would you ever sell meth to finance a movie? No, I don't think I would. <laughs> no. Ryan? No. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's not a business say. you want to get into. That's an explosive business. Ryan makes it's it sound like safer. Ryan makes it sound like he actually would <laughs> sell meth. I'm in the Empire business. I should mention that these are all filmmakers here with me. Matt is obviously a voiceover guy. He does sound design. Um, yeah. Very involved in the champagne movie makers. That's how I know all these guys. Uh, yeah. Ryan over here is an actor. I want to get you in the shot, Ryan. Yeah. You should on, wave to him. Which way? Where are we this this shot. Click, click over to the other shot, Matt. All right. <laughs> Always listen to your director. <laughs> I just pretend to be a filmmaker. Hence the acting. You guys can't see it, but we actually have, I think it's so cool. One of the things that Wirecast is doing is it's actually, it's streaming to you and then it's also outputting through VGA uh, uh, out to my TV over here. So I have a giant preview of what's going on, which has been super helpful. Uh, it's not often I get to use my teleprompter either. This is fun to like get all this gear together. Uh, although it's starting to get really hot in this room. <laughs> Uh, Gareth Croft has a great idea for people looking to simulate a crane shot uh, that a forklift truck uh, is, is a, uh, can be a good idea. I will say uh, I've done that before. It's awesome, but it's not really allowed. Like there's OSHA rules in like workplaces. Uh, you're not, well. Whatever. <laughs> no, follow OSHA rules. I'm just kidding. There's a lot of things I've done that, I, that weren't really people weren't really happy with. Like the time I rode on the back of a garbage truck to get a shot. Uh, but it was kind of in controlled situation. Um, but yeah, if, I guess if you're going to do a forklift, it's probably best to figure out a way to strap the camera on there uh, and not go up yourself because that's dangerous. I don't know exactly how they did it, but my buddy Tom Nickel, I think they actually got a jib, stuck it out of the top of a car to get a, a moving crane shot. It was really cool. It was a good. It turned out really well. I don't yeah. know if it was safe or not, but it looked great. Well, and and another thing you could rent. I you know, there's a there's like a, a like a construction equipment rental place near my house, and they have like those big um, what do they call them? Cherry pickers or like buckets. Uh, yeah. I guess I don't know if you need to be like trained to use those, or if you can just go out and rent one. Uh, you can rent one. Yeah, I mean you could send a guy up in that. Uh, make sure you have insurance if you're going to do these things. <laughs> Uh, this is a question from 93 Lego Man, and I actually don't know what it's referring to. It's, what is the guy in the back, maybe he uh, means you, so using in his left hand? His right hand. This, I think they're talking about the trackpad. The trackpad, yeah, I'll go back to Griffin. Yeah, the, the trackpad, I use that on my iMac, and I made Matt use it. He, he claims that all the errors today on, on the live show were because of that trackpad. I blame the Mac. Yeah. Uh, so he... Um, I, I just don't use a mouse. I, I learned how to edit Final Cut on a laptop, and I grew accustomed to using a trackpad. So when I bought my iMac, that was a choice. Instead of getting a mouse, get a, get a trackpad. And I love it. Uh, my favorite thing about it is doing the two-finger scroll on it, and I use that sideways in Final Cut to move quickly down my timeline. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a really great way just to navigate. I don't know if you can do that in, in Premiere, but it's really cool in Final Cut. Uh, speaking of Final Cut and Premiere, one of the things I teased in the promo earlier was that that's one of the things we are going to shoot, Russell and I. God, if I can find him. Uh, lost in the ether. But uh, we'd love to. We have several things we're going to shoot when we're in Vegas. So I'm really excited to take a couple weeks off and come back on September 9th and uh, show you all that stuff. Although we won't show it all to you on September 9th. That'd be crazy. We'll spread it out a little bit. <laughs> Um, I want to go soon, but uh, before we go, uh, I'd love to see if there's any more questions. Uh, and as you're pulling those up, I want to give uh, do some vocal credits. We actually had some credits. We tried to do some stuff. They didn't work out today. We tried to do some stuff Not where so there was like, you. I could put green screen in the clips, and this would actually chroma key out the green. So like, I could create a graphic. Uh, I mean, like, pull up the graphic. Go into the graphics tab and pull up the Griffin Hammond graphic. All right. Uh, like this graphic on the screen right now, I had that like in Final Cut over a bunch of green, and I was able to bring that in to Wirecast, and it would chroma key that out and just show the graphic. Now you're wondering, well, why couldn't I just do it this way that we're doing it right now? Uh, the cool thing was I could do it with like moving graphics, and I could create video clips that like fade into me or you know do other weird things. 
Um, you can turn off that graphic now. Uh, but it did. It just didn't work. Uh, it, it worked in practice, and then it didn't work when we tested right before the live show. It looked uh, great, though. Yeah, so I had some credits to show, um, and they just don't work. So I'm going to tell you the credits. <laughs> I have uh, me, Griffin Hammond, executive producer. There's Matt Shivers here, who uh, is our live switcher, voiceover talent. Uh, we have Ryan. Which last name are you going by? Wayne. Ryan Wayne over here. <laughs> <laughs> who is uh, our comment tracker today. And I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. We also have, uh, of course, Russell was on the show. Um, I still want to know where Russell where is right now. Is. Uh, we had several clips from uh, Justin Johnson, Eric Beck, Bryce Pardo, I think, or was it B Bryce Prado? I'm sorry. Uh, Indie Mogul fan who did that awesome anamorphic effect that you can get just from a like a plastic string. I think his might have actually worked a little bit better than mine. Mine was a flat string. His might have been a curved string, which I think might get better reflections. Um, we also had music today from Kevin McLeod and a bunch of cool music that I'm playing around with now, the uh, Epidemic Sound Library. It's something that's available to me as a YouTube lab channel, and I'm, I'm really enjoying the, some of the epic music today is from that, that uh, library. So I want to thank all those people for helping me today, and I want to thank you for watching. Any last comments or questions we should tackle before we go? We should do this again. A couple of neat ones there. Yeah, we should. Um, I wish I wish we could just like come back every day of the week and just do, like, once we got in a groove, this would be pretty awesome. Now that I have practice, I yeah. kind of know what I'm doing. But it was a lot of work. It's way more work to prepare for this than it actually is to do it live. So, man, and I'm, like, hot right now, too. It's really warm in this room. Uh, let's do some final questions before we go. From Adam Vickland, is there any gear on your dream list? Yes. Right now on my dream list, well, one is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, but I've already ordered that. It's coming. So I actually, when you say dream list, I actually have a dream list on B&H, B&H uh, Photo and Video. I keep a wish list of the stuff that I have, and I keep a wish list of the stuff that I want. And so I'm looking forward to moving. Actually, I might have already cheated and moved the Pocket Cinema camera over, even though it hasn't come yet. Uh, but on that wish list, I do have the new Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter zoom lens. This is a zoom lens that has an f-stop of 1.8, which is crazy. Uh, I have a really great zoom lens that I'm shooting this on right now. It's a 12 to 35 millimeter uh, f2.8. But that's like all you ever get in a zoom lens is 2.8. That's like the best you can get. This has like two and a half times, or two, not, I'm saying that wrong. Something like two and a half stops, which is something crazy, like five times as much light. It's it's more than that, I think, uh, to go down to one eight. Maybe. So if you are independently wealthy and you really like Griffin, Christmas is coming. It's not too early. Yeah. It's an $800 lens, which, depending on your point of view, sounds real expensive. But if you know lenses, a lens that can do all that for $800, it's, they're calling it a budget lens for filmmakers. Uh, problem is it's not available for Micro Four Thirds right now. It's only Canon, Nikon... Uh, it's available for pre-order right now. You should check it out if you are super interested. Uh, let's see. Ledopolis X. So will every Friday be something humorous like Home Without Marlecta? Maybe not humorous, but we'd like to treat Fridays as a fun day. So, uh, you know, I, I want to make it, you know, we're not getting rid of Friday 101 on Fridays. We're just bringing Russell onto Indie News and doing the same things, you know, doing more of what he does on Friday 101 and more of what I do on Indie News. Just make it even better. Uh and work together more. That leaves us open for Fridays to do fun things like the sequel to Home Without Marlecta. Uh, we'll do things like that. We'll try to do lots of short films. We'll try to see what time we save by working together and do some fun stuff. Uh, but it may be serious stuff. It may be interesting things. It'll just, it won't be indie news. It won't be an educational show. It'll be something we're trying out, maybe experimenting. Uh, so Friday should be a fun day to tune into indie news uh, or indie mogul. We want to do more things that get non-filmmakers interested, too, in, in what we're doing. Uh, let's see. Lucas wants to know, in the new season, are we going to focus more on the creative processes of filmmaking? Um, maybe. I don't know. I think the, 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 uh, the possibilities are endless, and I think it'll only be better with Russell and I actually talking to each other about what goes on the show. Because right now, it's like, I do indie news, he does Friday 101 uh, in a total silo. So I think, yeah, I think we're going to do cooler things uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. One more question here from Jeff Rain. That's actually how he said it, but this probably should be our last question. An update on the Sriracha documentary. I am editing right now, and I'm going to go back to L.A. 
uh, in September to get some final shots of them harvesting the peppers, uh, which I uh, don't have right now because they haven't harvested this season yet, so I need to go get that. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like this whole season got a little bit delayed, so I might be a little bit delayed by a couple weeks in getting the film done, but I'm still aiming uh, to hit a bunch of film festival deadlines at the end of September, early uh, October. So right now I'm just in the editing stage and it's pretty grueling to get through all of that footage, even just for a 30 minute film. Uh, it's, it's a lot of footage. And uh, for a while I was having a little bit of trouble, kind of some like writer's block of editing, but I, I kind of went back to my script and reworked the script, uh, put more specifics in it. And it, it let me go back and, and, and I, I worked through my uh, creative rut. But uh, Lots of cool things. I'm hoping to maybe even shoot some stuff for it while I'm in Vegas, but not too much. I don't want to add too much more to the film. Well, I want to thank you guys one more time for uh, for joining us, uh, for for joining me. See, I can't even talk anymore. This is why we have to end the live show. You're welcome. Thank you. This was great. Thank yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, support. Ryan. Thank you, Matt. Um, I think that's it. So, peace out, everyone. Be there for the epic third season of Indie News, premiering Monday, September 9th.